we are talking about the atoms that make up the wonderful world of chemistry. So like we uh, had mentioned earlier, like I had mentioned earlier, I asked you guys on Monday, I posed the question, what do you know about chemistry? Some of you guys said, I don't know much, to be honest. Some of you guys said, you, um, you were pretty much on the right track. You know, it's about the periodic table. Some of you guys mentioned matter. Some of you guys copied and pasted from the internet and didn't think I would notice. Moving on. But for those of you who really did try, um, congratulations, you're on the right track. Chemistry is the study of matter and its interaction, substances, the properties, um, and how it interacts with each other, what kind of properties it has, um, reactions, chemical or physical. All right, so we're going to be covering the basics of chemistry. You know, um, if we were in school, I would give you guys this blurb and I would say, you know, don't expect to see any boom booms because we're not doing any boom booms. Unless, you know, the only boom booms y'all be doing are the ones, you know, in the bathroom, but that's about it. So, um, haha, feel free to laugh at that. Yes, it is I, Mrs. George, making a joke. Ah, I miss this. All right, let's get started. All right, the atoms. What is an atom? Uh, what about it? Why is it so special? So we're talking about an atom being the smallest unit of any element, all right? So we've got the 118 elements that we're talking about. When we look at an atom of hydrogen, for example, the first atom, first element in the periodic table of elements, all right? Element is, in easy, simplest terms to remember it, it's the most purest form of a substance, all right? So can something like water be considered an element? No, 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 no. You will learn that H2O is actually a compound, right? You will learn that later. Right now we're only focusing on the element and the element is made up of, um, it's the purest form of that substance and that atom is the smallest unit of that element, all right? Um, does it always have to be the element? Uh, no, because everything has, is made up of atoms. We can't see it, all right? For example, um, a solid like the desk, made out of wood, right? But if you were to dig deeper in the world of chemistry, right, there are a lot of atoms within that piece of wood, and they are so packed together. That's why it's in solid form. Right, so atom is the smallest unit of matter, right? Within an atom, there are three subatomic particles or three main things that make up any atom. So for example, let me go back to the example of hydrogen if I strain hydrogen, you've got the nucleus of every atom, and inside the nucleus are your protons and your neutrons, All right? So think of, uh, think of a main circle. We're going to label that as nucleus, and inside we're going to put protons and neutrons. And then around that circle where the protons and neutrons are, there are other circles, but we're going to call them shells. They're shells surrounding that nucleus, and that's where the electrons are all located. So remember, an atom, any atom, has three subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, electrons. And now with those um, protons, neutrons, electrons, they have charges that go with it, all right? What does an atom look like? Well, it really depends on who you're asking. We're looking at, there are five different atomic models that have been proposed, all right? And each one of them look kind of different from each other. However, the main idea is similar in all of them, that all the scientists, um, if you ask anyone what an atom looks like, they will tell you, um, well, yeah, it, it, there's, we've got the nucleus, protons and neutrons, and then we've got shells 
or there are shells, electrons that are orbiting around the nucleus. So we agree on that. Now, what exactly which model, what, what kind of atom are you drawing? That depends on what type of model we are looking at. And what do I mean by that? Well, here are your five atomic models. Now, remember, well, it's not really remember, new fact, uh, the word atom comes from the Greek word that means uncuttable or indivisible. And we're talking about like, way back in like the BCE era, before the common era, right? Some dude named Democritus, he came up with this thing. He said, atoms are so tiny that no matter if I take a piece of, um, piece of um, any element, like copper, and I keep cutting at an atom of copper, and I keep cutting, and I keep cutting, and I keep cutting, and I keep cutting, I keep cutting I'm always going to get that substance of copper but it, it's i can't it it's going to be so 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 small that i can't see it so and it wasn't until the 1800s you'll see that so we're talking about like you know before the common era i want to say 400 to 600 bce that was when we first started seeing um democritus mentioning anything about an atom it's not until the 1800s where scientists really start looking at, hmm, what exactly is an atom? What are the charges? How are they shaped? What do they look like? Remember, they're so small. We cannot see them underneath a microscope, right? So take a look at the screen. Take a look at the different types of models. In 1803, John Dalton, all right, came up, he grew, drew upon the ancient Greek idea of atoms. The word atom comes from the Greek atomos, meaning indivisible. His theory stated that atoms are indivisible. Those of a given element are identical, and compounds are combinations of different types of atoms. So hydrogen is an element. You have one atom of hydrogen. In H2O, H2O is a compound. I have two atoms of hydrogen for every one atom of O oxygen. Fast forward to 1904, J.J. Thompson discovers electrons and he comes up with the plum pudding model, All right? So he shows that the atom is composed of electrons. You see the negative charge scattered throughout a spherical cloud of positive charge. 1911, Rutherford comes along, and this is a nuclear model, and this is a model that most of us are familiar with when we look at pictures of atoms on the internet, or if you've ever seen um, um, a book for chemistry, you, you, you'll see the nuclear model on there. Um, he did a lot of experiments, right? And he figured out that, hmm, Positive charged protons have to be in the nucleus in order for these electrons, the negatively charged uh, particles, to be surrounding or orbiting around. Bohr started to get a little bit more closer to what we're going with the Rutherford's study, and he really fixated on the fact that these electrons are moving around the nucleus in fixed sizes and energies, All right? And when we, um, for all intents and purposes, when we move into this drawing um, model of an atom, we will primarily be working with the Bohr's model of drawing an atom. See the positive sign over there? That's your nucleus. Now there's protons housed in there, and there are neutral neutrons inside the nucleus. And then do you see the Oopsies. Do you see the three, one, two, three lighter shaded circles around it? Those are your orbital shells. Do you see the minus signs in orange? These are electrons. And then you've got Erwin Schrodinger in 1926 who say that, you know, 
Mm, I don't know if they move in a, a fixed wave or a fixed path around the nucleus. We don't know where exactly the electrons are. Maybe it's a cloud of orbital, right? And then in within that cloud, we're able to find the electrons, right? And so now we, uh, the quantum model is the widely accepted, is the most accurate model of the atom. Because remember, we can't see it. We still, we, we can't see it, bro. Bro, bro. All right, so let's talk about the charges on subatomic particles. You've got your protons. Remember protons? You can read that. P for positive. They are positively charged. All right, positive. Their protons are in the nucleus. Neutrons are neutral, meaning they have no electrical charge. Okay, easy to remember. If you see NUT, NUT, neutrons, neutral. That's how, that's the easiest way I, I suggest that you remember it. Electrons are negatively charged. Where are the electrons? Outside of the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, protons, neutrons. Protons, neutrons. Outside of the nucleus are our electrons. Are you with me so far? All right, so I'm not going to overload you on too much information at this point. I uh, just want to, you know, and, and feel free to go back and play this video again, pause it to read the slides, mm, that kind of stuff. I do, uh, if you have balloons at home, there is a little mini experiment that you can do with just exactly what we're talking about with positive and negative charges. And if you don't have a balloon at home, if you have any plastic bags, that would be um, uh, excellent as well. All right, so I will post that. Um, what day is today? Wednesday, right? All right, so I'll post our little experiment for Friday if you want to take a look. And if you're bored, you have nothing to do on the weekend, feel free to um, indulge yourself in that little experiment, okay? And I'll post the details about that later, All right? And so to end our little discussion, I have got a video for you. The at homes. Family. The lyrics, I, I, I never came, I, I did not come up with the lyrics to this. If you want to sing along, please do. And I'm not sure if you know about the actual Adams family. So this is a play on the song, if it will ever load. How y'all doing? You doing good? Oh my god. Okay. They're round like a ball. They make up the air. They're everywhere. Can't see them at all. They're tiny and they're teeny, much smaller than a beanie. They never can be seen. The Adam family. Together they make gases and liquids like molasses and all the solid masses. The atom family, they are so small. They're round like a ball. They make up the air. They're everywhere. Can't see them at all. Neutrons can be found where protons hang around. Electrons they surround the atoms family. Teeny, much smaller than a beanie. Hey, they never can be seen. The Adam family, they are so small. They're round like a ball. They make up the air. They're everywhere. Can't see them at all. They're small. They're round like a ball. They make up the air. They're everywhere. Can't see them at all. Oh my gosh. All right, it's done. All right, it's done. I promise you, it's done. Hey.